All right, the title of my presentation is How Monsanto is Going to Get Europeans to Eat Genetically Modified Organisms. I saw this uh, meme on Facebook. It's been going around the last few weeks. Monsanto loses in Europe, hooray. You may have seen this as well. And this came from a quote. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Monsanto has been telling Europe will only sell biotech seeds where they enjoy broad farmer support, broad political support, and a functioning regulatory system. Next slide. And then they said, we've come to the conclusion that this has no broad acceptance at the moment. So everybody was like, okay, we've won. They're pulling out. But for the record, Monsanto posted this on their website. Uh, they say, right now the media is flooded with reports that Monsanto has stopped the marketing of GMO seeds in Germany and the EU. This is not correct. So this is what Monsanto is up against, the many local and national bans on genetically modified crops around Europe. And they definitely are working very hard to overturn these local and national bans. Um, they, they might be able to do this through the European Commission. Um, and then plan B is to do it via the WTO. And in 2006, the US won a WTO ruling that an undue delay in the EU approval process for 24 biotech crops from 1999 to 2003 constituted a de facto biotech moratorium that was inconsistent with WTO rules. The WTO also ruled that individual EU member state bans violated trade rules and were unjustified without adequate biotech risk assessments. And the US is still working on this. They continue their WTO complaint to this day. Plan C is the transatlantic trade deal. And so uh, the Hill, Congress blog, next slide, um, they say, the Hill described, a lobbyist actually writing for the Hill, described the transatlantic trade talks as the ultimate opportunity for U.S. seed companies to change the entire process to suit their needs. And it's not just Monsanto and the other GMO seed companies that are excited about the transatlantic trade deal. Food Drink Europe, a trade association representing the biggest food companies in the world from Nestle on down, distributed a public statement on the EU-US free trade negotiations in which they said they would happily give up European laws that block products that are contaminated with what they describe as a low-level presence of genetically engineered crops that have been approved in the US but not yet in the EU if they didn't have to deal with what they called new barriers like the US Food Safety Modernization Act. But they're, you know, it's, it's funny though because these are supposedly countries based or companies based in a country but obviously they're already multinational and they're using these agreements to invalidate our laws at the national and local level. So uh, the EU has already lifted bans on imports of U.S. live swine and beef washed with lactic acid, but U.S. lawmakers want the EU to give up more of its food safety rules, including to lift GMO bans. The U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk has already made a public demand for the EU to put GMOs on the table. And then in the 2013 report on technical barriers to trade, which has been mentioned already, uh, the, the USTR does list U.S. claims that the EU's biotechnology regulations have a detrimental effect on U.S. exports. And then, thanks to WikiLeaks and Food and Water Watch, we can also see how the U.S. State Department, what the U.S. State Department has been doing behind the scenes to help Monsanto and the other biotech companies. In 2010, WikiLeaks released a batch of diplomatic cables um, dating from 2005 to 2009. Food and Water Watch searched through them and found 200, or sorry, 926 cables from 113 countries that discussed GMOs and agricultural biotechnology. 38% of them were from embassies in U.S. member states. And so now we can read the State Department in its own words complaining about widespread consumer resistance to GMOs in Germany and absolutely no demand for, from consumers or producers for biotech crops in Austria. 
and how hard they have worked to eventually wear down Hungary's resistance and how disappointed they were when the public showed no signs of changing their minds about the ban on biotech corn there. And the effort that they're making to limit the influence of EU negative views on biotechnology. And we also know from WikiLeaks and Food and Water Watch that Monsanto has been helping embassy and USTR officials target their diplomatic efforts by providing information on which EU countries Monsanto feels are pro-biotech, anti-biotech, and undecided. The frightening thing as we look at what could happen in this trade deal is, is that not all EU countries have been unresponsive to US overtures. Even France, the embassy in France proposed hosting a conference highlighting how biotech can address food shortages in the developing world as a tactic to counteract France's negative public opinion of GMO crops. Uh, they felt that France would be open to that. Uh, they felt that Spain would be open because they cultivate more biotech crops than any EU member state, making it worth continuing to target and encourage acceptance of GMO foods in Europe. Romania has been pressed, was pressed to join the EU with its biotech industry firmly secured so that it could play an active role in the EU to preserve biotech options for farmers. The State Department urged Bulgaria to become a successful model and advocate of agrobiotech within the EU. And in 2008, Bulgaria did support a European Commission proposal to approve new genetically engineered crop varieties. The Czech Republic, in 2007, the Czech Republic supported approval of two genetically engineered corn varieties and genetically engineered sugar beets in the EU. And we also see State Department biotech strategy cables that reiterate the effort to continue to seek full compliance, full EU compliance with the 2006 WTO ruling. In France, the US Embassy has supported aggressive retaliation against WTO illegal trade barriers maintained by the European Union. And finally, who would be the very best person to negotiate the US position? Uh, it is Islam Siddiqui the chief agricultural negotiator for the USTR. Islam Siddiqui is currently the US Trade Representative's chief agricultural negotiator, but prior to that, he was the vice president for Crop Life America, the notorious lobbying group that represents pesticide and genetic engineering companies, including the big six, Monsanto, Syngenta, Bayer, BASF, Dow, and DuPont. Half of those countries, or half of those companies, are European companies, but they're represented by Crop Life America. And Crop Life is the group that infamously chided the First Lady when she planted an organic garden at the White House free of pesticides. Um, before working at Crop Life, Islam Siddiqui was a chemical farming and biotech booster in Clinton's USDA. It was his bright idea in 1997 and 98, an idea rejected by the organic community, but the idea was to get GMOs, sewage sludge, and irradiation into the USDA rules on organic. And of course, to get his position that he currently holds at USTR, it did not help or it did not hurt that he was a very big Obama fundraiser. So that's what we're up against. 